Welcome to our online worship service from Bridgewater United Church. We are glad you have joined our virtual congregation from wherever you may be today. Over the last four weeks, Reverend Jeff has been speaking about our church's core values. Today, Reverend Jeff speaks about our final value as he asks us to ponder what it means to love God, self, others, and creation. We are glad you have found a moment to join us and encourage you to click and share this with others, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and spread the good news of how we are creating a community where God's love is made visible for all. Thanks again for choosing to be united with us. Our community is truly a place where everyone belongs. Now, here's Jeff. Well, good morning and welcome to Bridgewater United Church Online on what is a, a cool, windy day here, but a beautiful day still to be in God's creation. Today, I want to send a special welcome to our friends who are joining us from British Columbia. Thanks for tuning in. And so let's begin our worship with the singing of our Be United Course and the lighting of our candles. No matter who you love, Come and worship my friend Just be you so we see The wonderful light God placed in your heart Be united with me Be united with me Oh God, just as we see your beauty reflected in nature, we too see your spirit reflected in the face of each other. So today, open us, please, to your transforming love. And may this worship be a time of blessing for us all. Amen. Hard work doesn't always pay off. Around the world, many people work hard and still can't feed their families. Your gifts through mission and service turn hard work into true hope for the future. Thanks to your support, resourceful people like Margaret Kagundu have the opportunity not just to survive, but to thrive. Margaret and her children live in Nyeri, Kenya. 
In some parts of Kenya, people live in inadequate housing, without running water, and with very little access to health care. Margaret struggled to meet her family's basic needs before she received a microloan from a lending program supported through your gifts to Mission and Service called Jami Imara, meaning a strong community. 2004 is when I joined this project. I was given the first loan. I had saved and I was given a loan of 2,000 shillings. I benefited a lot from that 2,000 shillings. I started a small business of selling vegetables. I was granted 10,000 shillings four times. Having been given the 10,000 shillings four times, I cleared and went on to get 20,000 shillings until I built these houses. I built these two houses for renting out. I have even started keeping goats that reproduce. I've educated my children. There is even one who has started Form 1. I sold the goats that I had and took him to Form 1. He is now in high school. Supporting women like Margaret, who are determined to change their lives, is just one of the ways that you are helping turn hard work into hope every day. There are many women who want to join the group because they see that I have progressed a lot. I am no longer the way I was before. Thank you for your generosity to the mission and service of the United Church of Canada. Please make a gift today. There's many things that I really appreciate about the United Church of Canada and, and the work that we do across the country. You know, we're a denomination, a church that doesn't only focus on ourselves or, or our congregations. That our theology, our understanding isn't one that is insular. That our work, our theology is really based on a love for all people and all creation. That our mission and service funds are used to help restore people's lives to wholeness and also to steward our earth. That we haven't separated and disconnected creation, others, strangers, neighbors, God and ourself. And that we all see that they're all interconnected. We believe that too at Bridgewater United and so when you give to our ministry, when you support us, you're supporting this, this idea, this mission that we all share to create a world based on one great love, one great God for all of us. Thank you for giving. Thank you for supporting us. May God bless you. Today's scripture reading is from Mark chapter 12, verses 28 to 31. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have you ever um, been walking in your home and maybe going through the, the hallway and you catch your reflection in a mirror take a quick glance and you think wow I look I look pretty good today or or maybe you have a reaction like oh my goodness I better go do my hair 
we often catch reflections of ourselves. You know, it could be in a store window, or it could be walking through nature and seeing our reflection in a in a still pond. Or maybe you've had that experience of of being in the mall and you go into a store and you're trying on a, a pair of pants. You end up in that change room that has the eight mirrors all around you and and you, you see all these different angles of yourself and you think, oh my goodness, I didn't know that's what I looked like. In fact, I'm still surprised when I see pictures of myself sitting with the children at the front of the church and there's a shot from above where I'm able to see that I actually don't have a lot of hair on the top of my head. But imagine if we lived in a world where we had never seen a reflection of ourselves. How would we really see ourselves then? Or it's almost like if you've never seen a reflection of yourself and and you go to one of those fun fairs where there's the hall of mirrors. Have you have you done that? And you walk into a room and there's all these different reflections. You see yourself as as the tall, skinny one, or as the short, squat one, or maybe you're a little bit squiggly, and then there is a reflection out of all those mirrors that's actually you. But if you've never seen a reflection of yourself, we wouldn't know who that is. I share this and offer because there's sort of a universal principle, a spiritual principle that says that we see ourselves reflected in others. That w- that with each person we encounter, we see a reflection back of ourselves. It's why this morning I've chosen to be here, one of my favorite little spots in Hubbard's The Savory Plate, amongst people, and you can hear the hustle and the bustle, people having conversations, people affirming each other, but also probably challenging, critiquing, and unfortunately, maybe even judging and blaming. Today, we look at our our last value in our values at Bridgewater United. Love of God, self, others, and creation. And it can seem like a really big one, right? That we've packed four things into one value. But I want to share with you today that it really is just one. That when Jesus gives us this only commandment in the New Testament, it's a pretty powerful statement. Out of everything that he does and says, out of everything that's held in the Bible and all of the wisdom and spiritual teachings, that love God yourself and neighbors, or love your neighbor as yourself, is the only thing he really calls us into. You know, it is difficult, this idea of just loving others. And often, I think our ability to love others or inability to love others is is truly a, a reflection on how we view ourselves. That because we don't often love ourselves, haven't fully accepted the uniqueness of who we are, that we take that out on others. That the harshness, the judgment, the the feeling that we're not good enough or not enough that we often hold and carry is something that we project onto others. Just like when we see things in others that we love and admire, I suspect they're probably things that each of us have as well. One of the, I think, challenges that this idea of of loving God, self, others, and creation presents to us is, is even the way that we phrase it has set it up that there's these four separate things. You know, that I need to learn to, to love myself, that I also need to learn to love others, that a third thing would be I have to love God, and finally creation. And as long as we think about loving God, self, and others in creation in this way, we're always going to have separateness. We're never going to truly be integrated. In other words, the only way that I can love God is by loving others. The only way I can love others is by truly loving myself. The only way I can love God is by understanding God created me uniquely and specially. 
that I, like others, am an imperfect, perfect face of God. And that to the extent that I can accept and embrace that is probably the extent to which I can accept and embrace others. And so too it is with all of creation. You know, I can't walk in, in nature and admire God's beauty and think of it as somehow separate from God, for it's been given to us by God. And even nature itself reflects back to us who we are in this great universe and in relationship to each other. I mean, I don't know about you, but if, have you ever been hiking and you stub your toe in a rock and your first reaction is to kick the, kick the rock? You get upset and it's like, it's the rock's fault when the rock is just being a rock. That frustration is nothing to do with the rock or nature. There's some voice in us saying, how could you be so stupid? Why didn't you see that? Why weren't you more careful? Nature itself reflects and presents opportunities for us to connect with ourselves and others. We find ourselves walking on a hot day and we seek the shade of a beautiful tree. Our feet are sore and tired from a long walk and we dip them in the coolness of the water. You see, we are that water. We are nature. And as we think about creation and the stewardship of creation, if we look at the earth as, as something just to exploit, then we are exploiting God and we're exploiting ourselves. We're exploiting everyone. It's a fundamental shift in our being and in our, in our souls when we see that, that all of creation is just a further extension of who each of us are, just as our other human beings. This value of loving God's self and others begins first with the selfless recognition that each of us are uniquely, wonderfully, perfectly, and beautifully created. Just as many of us have our own children and, and we see them as these wonderful beings, so too God looks at us, God's great spirit sees us in this way. What if we were to look at others with that same eye, that same love that a parent has for their child? What if we were to recognize that actually there's no such thing as a stranger? That each and every person is a manifestation of God's self. You know, I remember early on in my candidacy for becoming a minister, a clergy person asking me to prioritize God, my family, my church, and others. And I can remember being so troubled by that question. Troubled because there is no way for me to view God separate from my family. There's no way for me to view the church differently than strangers. And there's no way to view strangers differently than creation, and there's no way to view creation differently than myself. All of life is reflected back to us in the face of strangers and loved ones, in nature, God himself. And so today, I think, as we think about this last value, we can think about our first value, spiritual health. That call for us to integrate this deep awareness that we are one. And that if we could, if we could see God, it would, it would merge and it would change and it would warp into uh, me with nature and nature with you. And it would be this one great universal cosmic energy that just takes many different forms. And so why would we want to ignore, hurt, or separate ourselves from any piece of that? Why would we see the earth and creation as different from how I would treat myself or those I care for most deeply, or how I view a stranger? Friends, loving is not an easy task. 
it requires deep reflection on our own part. It asks us to be accepting and not judging. And at its core, it's a recognition that we are good, that we're enough, and that we, like everyone else, are a face of God. And so let's embrace and accept that. Let's truly begin to see a face of God when we look in the mirror. When we look into the eyes of another, when we take a walk on the beach or when we find ourselves in a, in a coffee shop like I am today, enjoying the smiling, loving faces of people I don't know. It's my hope that as a community of faith, we can truly enthusiastically engage this last value. To love ourselves, to love God, to love one another and to love creation. In other words, it's just one thing, to be love. May it be so for each of you today. Amen. Today, O oh God, as we reflect on your call, your commandment to, to love you and to love one another, we can't help but feel a deep sense of connectedness and, and warmth towards all humanity. We acknowledge, O oh God, that that in many ways we disconnect and separate ourselves from your one true love. And yet as we take time to pause and to marvel at your creation, as we enjoy the fresh air of mountains or walks on beaches, or as we traipse to the forest and notice the most intricate and smallest beauties that you've created for us to enjoy. We know that we are connected to you and to each other. And yet it's so difficult at times for us to just to love and to be love. And we know part of that is our refusal to truly believe that we are worthy of being loved, that you have created us uniquely, that we each have something to offer your world. And so we pray today that you would help us to know that we are enough, that you would help us to see your beauty in the face of strangers and neighbors, and that as your son was so able and willing to receive others, that we too would be open and welcoming of the spiritual beings that we are and we encounter. And so today we pray for oneness, we pray for unity and awareness as we give thanks for this deep love we know and we feel as we still ourselves in these moments and connect to all of you and all of us through your one spirit. For it's that spirit that calls us together as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And so, my friends, as we take time to reflect on what it means to truly be connected to each other, to God and creation, in this one great love, let us, too, also remember the wonderful blessing that you are and that others are to you may be so. Amen. If you have found these online services helpful and meaningful for you, well, here's your chance to thank us. Believe it or not, in this day and age of social media, YouTube videos, and technology, when you subscribe to our YouTube channel, it's a great big help for us. So please take a moment, hit the button below or the word that says subscribe, enter your email, and you'll be doing us a huge favor. Thanks for watching.